All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about some different upload vulnerabilities. We're going to be doing some file upload and we're going to be trying to bypass different filters on the client side, on the server side, as well as uploading a web shell and reverse shell and checking out some magic bytes and different ways to bypass the file upload. And so we're going to be here on the upload vulnerabilities on Try Hack Me for this. We're not going to be working through all of this. I've gone ahead and started up the lab. So I'm going to copy this right here and we're not going to be going through all of this. Like I'm not going to read the methodology. That's what we're making the video for is just to show you my methodology in doing different file uploads and getting started. I believe it's just start the box, read about it. I believe the first place we're actually going to do any kind of exploiting is going to be in overriding existing files. So we'll go ahead and paste this IP address in here and you have all of the different URLs we're going to use for the different exploits. So in your terminal, you can gedit the Etsy host file and I already pasted in the IP address with all of the different URLs right here. So that way we can visit them if you're following along you will need to do that as well. So now we could just come over here and check out this overwrite and open it up in a new tab. And what we're supposed to do, if you come back and read this, is we're gonna have a, an, an image and we need to overwrite it with a different file. And I believe it's going to be using a JPEG and it says view the page source and it is a JPEG right here and it's gonna be found inside images and mountains. So we have the full path, which we're going to need that here in just a little bit. So the first thing we can do is just try to upload a JPEG. And so we'll grab one and move it over to our desktop. So we can just type in locate and we just want a JPG, so JPG, and we have a whole bunch of them right here. So we'll just copy this to where we are and we can paste that in and we'll copy it to our current working directory. And that is what this period right here stands for. So now if we LS, we should have this sample JPEG right here. So now we can select file. We're going to grab sample JPEG and we will open it up. And if we upload this, it should tell us that it uploads successfully. And if you remember, they were found, the images were found in images. And then we uploaded sample.jpg. And we're doing this to check to make sure that our file actually did upload and it did. So now all we need to do is change the name of our file. So we have sample JPG right here. And what we're gonna do is just type in move and we're going to move sample JPG and we're going to change it over to what was the name of that file mountains mountains jpg we'll just grab this whole name right here so we spell that correctly and we will paste that in so that should change that for us so now it's mountains.jpg and to overwrite this file we just need to upload our file with the exact same name we should be able to upload and it says we override the file congratulations to us and it gives us the flag and you can copy this and paste it in back over here if you are following along but now we want to try and get a reverse shell so we actually are told the next thing we want to do is get remote code execution if you actually want to get the flags you can open up this shell page right here i'm just going to go ahead and get code execution on this one right here because neither one of them has any filtering bypass and that one's already open. So we're going to upload a shell and we're gonna do this two different ways. You're gonna see people upload shells most commonly as a web shell and then they'll test it and then they'll upload a shell usually from Pentest Monkey if you're watching any kind of CTS. That's usually how you're gonna see this done. So we're gonna do both ways. So the first thing we're gonna do is just go out to Google and we're gonna type in web shell um, PHP. And we will want to look for Shushant right here, 747 and we'll just grab this second one right here so that way it allows us to pass in a parameter and actually ask for commands instead of this right here which we would have to change the who am i every single time so now we can just gedit and we're going to make a file called web.php and this is going to be our web shell and we can close out of that we can select a file upload our web shell and click upload it tells us we've overwrote the file which is fine we don't really need to worry about that too much 
we can go images and now we're going to look at our web shell so if you remember previously we went to our file which was called sample.jpg and we have our page right here but we want to get to our web shell so we can go web.php and nothing is here and that's because it is in fact executing our code so we can add a question mark cmd equals who am I? And it's going to tell us we're at WW data. So now we have injection right here. We can actually go ahead and get a reverse shell. So that way we have a shell here in our terminal. And we'll hit Command T for a new tab, make it bigger. And we're going to go netcat LVMP 444. And this is going to allow us to catch the connection back. And now we can just come over here and just type in bash reverse shell and payloads all the things should work for us we'll go bash tcp and we'll just use this one right here so what i think we'll do is catch this in a repeater so we'll come back over here so we'll just hit enter right here we can send that to repeater send that on its way now what we want to do is paste in our reverse shell we just copied. And what we'll do is edit this. We are listening on port 444. My IP address is 10.21.182. And we can highlight this entire thing right here and hit Control U if you are on a Mac for URL encoding. Send it and it says OK, but if we come back to our terminal, we see that nothing is happening. It is just listening. So what we will need to do is un URL encode this so we can redo the whole thing all at once. So Control Shift U and we're going to need to type in bash dash C to get it to execute our little reverse shell payload right here. So we'll put that in quotes. And now if we re URL encode this, and we send it. It should have hung there for us, so I might have a typo because it is still listening. So bash c, and I see my problem. This is bash, not batch. So now if we resend this, it is hanging here for us. And we have a reverse shell, so who am I? And we are here on the system. So what we can do at this point is exit. So that's one way to get a reverse shell using a web shell. But we can also use payload all the things. We'll use Pentest Monkey, but we will use Pentest Monkey for a PHP reverse shell. And Pentest Monkey usually is going to be the most common reverse shell you're going to see for PHP whenever you're watching any kind of tutorials on getting reverse shells or CTF. So Command A, Command C and we will gedit and we'll just call this shell.php paste that in we're going to need to change our ip address so 10 to 1 and we will also need to change our port to port 4444 i think i deleted these quotes and we'll overwrite that previous shell by just uploading one with the exact same name and let's give this a try so if we say images shell.php i did not start our netcat listener which we need in order to get this to work so let's try this again it's hanging and we get a shell back so who am i and we are back on the machine so now let's exit this and let's try something a little more challenging. So if we come back over to try hack me, there is one that is going to do some filtering. So bypassing client side filtering, and it's going to tell us if we inspect the page, what we need to upload it as. And I believe it actually tells us what we need to use to bypass the filtering. So we're going to be using this shell.php and we they're actually using the pen test monkey shell which i suppose we could use instead of our web shell but um, i think we're going to use our web shell because it is easy and we don't need to use a netcat listener every single time so let's go ahead and give this a try let's open this up right here let it load and we are ready to select a file web shell right here open invalid file does it take a 
JPEG, invalid type. Let's try sample PNG. So we're able to use a PNG. So there's a couple different ways we can try to bypass this. The first way is going to be coming over here and let's actually just change the name to our reverse shell. So we'll change our reverse shell name, web shell, and we're gonna change it to web.png just like this. We'll go ahead and hit enter. Let's come back over and see if we can select this file. It is saying that's okay. Turn on our interceptor, upload, and we should be able to change this to just PHP and bypass the client side. Let's see if that works. Uh, file uploaded successfully. Let's see, was that stored in images? I know that it tells us we have to fuzz this at some point to find the right directories. I don't really want to fuzz it. Um, so here is our web shell. We didn't have to fuzz it this time. So if we type in our question mark, CMD equals who am I? we get WW data. So we were able to bypass the filter on this specific challenge by just changing the web.php to web.png. It bypasses the client side filter. We catch that over here in burp and we didn't actually send that over to repeater, but you could send it over to repeater to play with it a little bit if you wanted to. So what you could do is select your file web.png, open, turn the proxy on and upload and what you do is send this over to repeater and now you would have it over here and let's say web.png didn't work you could type in web.php and maybe it just wanted this png in the title or maybe we could use php5 or something else in order to get this to run so sometimes it's helpful to send this over to repeater so we have it which we're probably going to have to do coming up pretty quickly in the next few challenges so that was bypassing a client side filtering. The next one is file extensions. Let's see what this one has for us right there. You actually see what I just showed you, the jpg.php. And they actually have a bunch of the PHP extensions listed out here. So if PHP doesn't work, you can try PHTML, PHP3, PHP5 is the one you're probably gonna see the most in CTFs. So let's go ahead and close that. We'll open up the next web page that we are going to upload to, to exploit. This one is basically gonna be very CTF-y with this little file upload command prompt we have right here. I imagine they did that just to change it up a little bit. But what we can do is you just type in select and we can try a PNG and then you would just type in upload and it'll run and it'll say file uploaded successfully. We're gonna need to find the place where these files are being stored. So we can just fuzz this and we'll go back. Let's fuzz this specific page to make sure we're able to find the right location that the files are going to. So paste and we can we could try images. I don't believe images is gonna work on this one. Yeah, see it's not found. So we could try assets. Let's copy this, paste, and we have a PHP. What did we save that as? Was it sample.png? And we get forwarded to a different page. That doesn't seem to be it. Let's try privacy. And inside of a privacy, we have our sample PNG. So now that we know where this is uploading to, we can see if we can upload a reverse shell. So let's give this a try by looking at what we have here. So we have our web shell. Let's go ahead and move that back. So move web.png to web.php and we will save that. Let's try and upload that. And so we'll go select and we want web.php. Let's grab this over here inside of burp. Type in upload. We're going to send this to repeater. If we turn our interceptor off and come back, it's gonna tell us the file type was invalid. So let's give this a try by going to our file type. We can try what we did previously by typing in png.php and sending this. And if we come back to 
that page over here that was holding what we were uploading, the privacy, it did not show up. So we could try the PHP 5 and send this. Let's refresh the page. And it looks like our web shell is right here. So if we go CMD equals ID, we're going to get back WW data. So we're able to bypass this filter by using the PHP 5. I wonder if we even need PNG at all. We might be able to send that and bypass it just all on its own without the PNG. And it did work. So you don't even need the PNG in there in order to get this specific shell to upload. You just needed the PHP 5. So let's go ahead and check out the next one. So we'll scroll up and we can close that off. I think we were on magic numbers. So we have the magic bytes right here that you can use at the top of a file and change a file type. So if we go like this and we say file and we use our web shell, it's going to tell us this is a PHP script. But if we type file on sample PNG, it's going to tell us that this is a PNG image. So what we're going to need to do on this one is use the magic bytes in order to get our shell to properly upload. It kind of shows you how to find them, what you can do with them, and then we're supposed to grab the flag. So let's go ahead, open up the one titled magic, close out of that. Let this open and it tells us magic numbers, select a file and then it says upload. So let's try and just grab a sample PNG. So sample PNG, open, uh, upload. It says GIFs only. So we will need to grab a GIF. So we can just type in locate GIF. That uh, was not what I wanted. Lot locate GIF, I type that completely backwards. Let's go ahead and copy this. So sometimes when you do magic bytes, let's go copy. We need to the beginning of this and we are going to CP. Now we need to go back to the end to the current spot that's called internet gift. So if we come over here and we actually, we before we get, before I get ahead of myself, I'll show you one way to find magic bytes is just to come out to Google and type in um, magic bytes. So you can just type in magic bytes or PNG or whatever it is that you want to use. And we'll copy this. We'll go to Google because I accidentally shut off the using this as a search bar. And you can see that you'll have these signatures right here. But what we're going to be using is a GIF. And so we could actually just copy this right here. And I'll show you why this works with a GIF. So if we come in here and we just cat out this file, you can't read it. And what we can find at the top of this file, actually, since that's taken a while, we will just G edit because this will open us up to the top. We have this right here, this GIF 87A5. And what we had over here was this GIF 87A. So we could actually just copy this GIF A7A5 right here. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And we can use that for our magic bytes. So if we remember what we had right here, if we um, type in file on our web shell, it tells us this is a PHP script. But if we G edit and we edit our PHP script and we paste in these magic bytes and we save this, what you can do now is just type in file on this and it's going to tell us that it's now a GIF. So it should theoretically tell us that this is a GIF and allow our PHP web shell to upload. So you can upload this file and it tells us file uploaded successfully. Now half the battle in a lot of CTFs is just finding the location that our file actually uploaded to, which tends to be a problem. So let's go ahead. We've had images, so images, I should probably just start fuff so that way we can actually find it while we try and guess. And let's copy this, copy and run that. So we could come back over here and guess while that runs. And we could just type in uploads, which is always a good guess. And that doesn't work. So let's see if anything's come up. Graphics is a new one. So let's try graphics, paste that in. Um, says forbidden. Let's actually try our web.php. So we get our GIF, but we don't actually get our shell back. So let's go ahead and give this a try and type in 
uh, question mark cmd equals ls and we get web.php so if we type in an id it's going to tell us that we are ww data so that is a couple of different ways to go ahead and exploit file upload and if you have any questions or anything in this video was not clear or you want me to go in more depth and maybe explain more detail then you can go ahead and let me know down in the comments and we'll do some more file upload in the near future thanks for watching